Morning, Ken. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. You came very early. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I guess you are working at your office at the university. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so how is the situation in terms of the pandemic? Pandemic. Uh, yeah, in Tokyo area, uh, Almost, almost lecture uh, are held in online. Oh, I see. That's good. Yeah. It's far from the usual standard situation. And you may come to the university. Ah, yes. For the, for the case of uh, professors, mm -hmm. uh, we can come, we can go to university. And in the case of students, uh, they cannot uh, concentrate in one room. Concentrate meaning uh, the problem is density. High yes. density is uh, not so good. And they must, uh, far from, far away, uh, they must keep the distance. And it is said uh, one meter is uh, at least distance yes. during the lecture. So we cannot, uh, we cannot do the full spec, full capacity of the lecture room. Uh, organization of lecture is, is difficult, still difficult. But we can, we can provide some lecture for the seminar uh, mm -hmm. and not so, uh, not so big lecture. For the case of small lecture, we, we partially uh, have the uh, usual lecture by standard uh, oral communication. I see. But um, this might be a problem for the, for the students mm -hmm. if uh, there is, uh, say, uh, a surface lecture, mm -hmm. and immediately after the surface lecture is uh, an online lecture. Online. Right. So uh, switching might be difficult for the students. Uh... So interactive style is quite difficult. If I upload some movie or some lecture uh, PDF, uh, it, we can do it uh, somehow, but for the interactive style. Yes, that's difficult. Uh, yes, technically it's difficult. And uh, we face exactly the same problem during the conference because mm. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, can yeah. Go, we cannot go for a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we cannot go for stay. lunch. Hmm? We cannot go for a lunch together. Ah, oh my. Let me see. Okay, so we have we have a few more minutes to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe I can go to toilet and take uh, my yes. coffee. Yeah, bring my coffee. Good idea. Okay. I temporarily have a English book.
So it's uh, half past nine, so we could slowly begin. I would like to welcome all of you. Uh, we are very happy. Thank you very much. Excuse me. I, would, I will mute everyone, uh, but... Please. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but probably you, you may uh, uh, mute all. Okay. Yeah, but then, okay, I will. Now you are also muted, so you need to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. You have the, yes. So I would like to welcome Everyone, we are very, very happy that you joined us for a meeting on the very long name, Non-Local Diffusion Problems, Non-Local Interface Evolution. Uh, the, actually, this is the first online meeting I'm organizing. And I'm very happy you joined us uh, in such a great number. Uh, the first speaker of today is Professor Yoshikazu Giga of the University of Tokyo. And he is a person of many interests, uh, ranging from viscosity theory to uh, hydrodynamics. But today he will be talking about a finer singular limit of a single well modical motor, motor functional and its application. Yoshi, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction. And it is my great honor to be the speaker of uh, this very interesting symposium. Uh, the today's topic, my topic today is quite different from uh, my usual favorite. Uh, it's, uh, it's related to very fundamental problem of phase separation, uh, modica mortar type. And, uh, and this is maybe a little bit out of uh, scope of this symposium, non-local diffusion problem and non-local interface problem. But it's, a, it's not an evolving problem, it's a static problem. And it's a kind of a diffusion problem. It's very related to total variation. Okay, and this is my joint, recent joint work with my student, Jun Okamoto, and, uh, and, and Masaki Uesaka. Uh, from Arisma Company and University of Tokyo. Okay. Uh, sorry, Professor Giga, please unmute yourself uh, for some sorry. reason. <laughs> I, I send the slide and then mute it. So, sorry. It's on, uh, it's, do, do you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes, at the moment okay. we, we okay. hear you. Gamma, uh, okay, that, of course we would like, so what do I mean finite topology and gamma limit and other graph convergence I would like to explain and, uh, uh, and one of the key method in this uh, research is unfolding of the graph. So this is a three, number three. Okay, now what's the problem? So the, my content is very soft, one dimensional and uh, very understandable. So, and very elementary. Okay. Next slide, next slide. Just a second. That does not move. Okay, the, what's the background? Okay, we consider such kind of uh, en sing uh, singular limit problem, but we consider this energy. This energy consists of Dirichlet energy. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Dirichlet energy. Di oh, I'm sorry, this is a, a little too wrong. Dirichlet energy plus potential energy. And uh, potential usually consists of double well, this is very popular, but here I just to a single well potential. This looks like very 
uh, very trivial. Oh, I'm sorry, it's, it's some, some translation of cards, so I stopped to using this pen. And uh, so epsilon is small parameter. And uh, in the case of double well potential, uh, it, uh, this is very well studied by, uh, goes back to Mo Modica and Mortora, but uh, we are, we are, we are, we are just considering this single well. Single well, of course, it looks trivial because everything looks like it becomes one and it no, looks no problem. However, so let me, let me explain uh, the problem. What is the gamma limit of this uh, pro single limit problem as epsilon tends to zero, okay? And for double well potential, it is well known and single well also it is well known if you consider this uh, gamma compares in L1 topology. So gamma limit, what is the, so this is uh, for those who are not familiar with this concept. And this go, go back to the George. And uh, well, the motivation of the problem, of course, the, the minimizer of epsilon minimizer combines to the minimizer of some limit energy or not. And what is the limit energy? The limit energy is very, in a weak sense, is something like gamma limit. Gamma limit notion that uh, this should be some lower semi-continuity. This is the first inequality, lower semi-continuity. And uh, also we have some recovering sequence, recovery sequence, existence of recovery sequence to, for this value. If we, these two, two properties of the field, we say this E epsilon tends to epsilon in gamma combines. Problem with this topology, of course, the concept depends upon choice of topology and the convergence in this. this. And the U epsilon, so this is a natural result. If epsilon is the minimizer of E epsilon, then the limit, if it exists, uh, is, a, is a minimizer of, uh, yeah, minimizer of the limit energy. We need to some check compactness. And it is very successful in the, in the case of double well. Double well case, the limit is uh, under, for example, the volume constraints, the limit must be uh, the number of jump discontinuity, okay? And this is a well, well, study, well, well studied by Modica and Mortora and Modica and Stamberg, including higher dimensional case. This is the L1 limit, gamma L1 limit. Uh, okay, so, but uh, for single for si si for single well case, of course, if nothing happens, everything becomes uniform. So it doesn't. It's not so interesting. Interest, but it's not so interesting. However, suppose that you consider the problem in the in the interval minus one to one, and add this energy, add this energy. We point wise, it's very concentrated energy, at zero point b times. Okay, and what is the limit as epsilon tends to zero? Of course, if you consider everything L1, this point is invisible, so it's too coarse, too rough. So, and in fact, if you, uh, we, we, can, we, we can calculate, minimize explicitly if Fv is uh, just a quadratic functions. Let W epsilon be a minimizer of, uh, of uh, this energy, E epsilon B, then W epsilon, of course, this is a linear problem. So you can calculate this explicitly. Okay, you don't need to, uh, you, you don't need to rec uh, recall this kind of stuff. What is important is zero is just one plus B over one. It's less than one, right? And the energy, limit energy is uh, B over one plus B square. Uh, lim uh, and, and the limit of energy of, at the W epsilon is less than B. So this is a, okay, it's for uniform one, the, 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 the limit is just B, but uh, this must be a small compared with this one. Oh, I'm sorry, this is, uh, this is not weak limit, oh, of course weak limit the same in the real number. Okay, and uh, let me show you the graph. So this is W epsilon. Oh. This is W epsilon 
And if epsilon becomes smaller and smaller, then the limit is just looks like this green line. So this is just epsilon explicit uh, writing out of minimizer. This is a linear problem. So uh, of course, W epsilon tends to one almost everywhere, but uh, we have to 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 find to find this prof stuff. We have to extract finer structure of the limit. Okay. So what our problem is the following: What is the suitable topology to catch the above limit? Is it possible to prove gamma covariance under such a limit? This is my problem. And the related problem. Let me mention related problem. This is a often called Ambrosio Tortorelli functional proposed by 1989. And uh, this is uh, the, trying to approximate manhood Schach functional. And actually this is a limit, gamma limit. It's gamma limit is manhood Schach function, functional. Ambrosio Tortorelli functional now has two variable. And, uh, and for V, V is a function, V is a, uh, this E epsilon V is a single word Madika Mortora functional. And G is a given function and lambda is a fidelity constant. And uh, okay, so in the V is in some sense uh, minimizer and uh, and if it's a sigma is given positive and the U is a, another variable. And if you try to, if you let epsilon tends zero, the minima, minim, for minimal, V disappear and V is just uh, uh, becoming in some sense set. So, and, uh, and uh, this is a measure and this is uh, the same. And, and uh, so the place K is in some sense, uh, the place G, V becomes, uh, uh, v, v tends to zero and uh, tends to one. So the place K is a place where V tends to zero and V uh, other places are just omega. And uh, this area is uh, in some sense limit of this e epsilon in that study. Okay. And of course this Ambrosio Trotoreli approximation for to understand okay first of all if you understand trying to understand manhood shach functional this uh, okay this e, u and k is unknown so it is very difficult to calculate this energy because k itself is unknown the set is unknown so it's better to approximate by k as a function function v so this is the idea of tortorelli and ambrosio ambrosio tortorelli and uh, there's uh, several other application to uh, to catch uh, brittle fracture by Frankfurt and Marigio, and also Steiner program by Le Menat and some Brogia. So there are many applications to use this kind of uh, Ambrosio Tortorelli function uh, uh, idea. So using, uh, instead of, instead of using set, we they introduce such kind of uh, single well Modica Mortora energy. So, how about uh, the application of our study? Our study is, uh, we consider the Kobayashi Warren Carter model to describe uh, motion, uh, to describe motion of grain boundaries, grains. And uh, there, this is Kobayashi Warren Carter model. And this is a, a total variation and V square and E epsilon. It's very closely related to Ambrosio Tortorelli in homogenization of the total variation. Ambrosio Tortorelli approximation of um, uh, uh, Manfred Schacher is a kind of uh, inhomogenization of Dirichlet energy, but this is a total variation energy. Yes, so the, the original one, this one, is a, this one is a, in some sense, this gradient U square is a Dirichlet energy, V is a, in the minimizer, V is almost one, except uh, several sets, except set K, something like that. So uh, V is a, uh, uh, so it's kind of inhomogenization of the Dirichlet energy from this point of view. So in this case, uh, it's a kind of uh, inhomogenization of total variation energy with respect to this Modica Mortora. And original U epsilon is, yeah, Considered with Ambrosio Tortorelli homogeneous on the energy. 
So what's the difference? In the case of uh, Ambrose Tortorelli approximation of uh, total, uh, let's see, uh, manifold Sech energy, the limit of Vf has the same depth, which implies that set K is a finite set for one dimensional case. In our case, the depth of limit is not the same. It depends on the size of jump of U. So this is a very diff different aspect compared with uh, Mod Modica uh, Ambrosio Tortorelli approximation of Dirichlet energy. Um, uh, Ambrosio Tortorelli in homogenization of Dirichlet energy. If it's a, the total bias is quite different. What's the relation to the uh, uh, Kobayashi Maru and Kata energy for our problem? Let me give a very uh, simple example. If U is a two value function, zero and one, and it jump at zero, then uh, 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 Kobayashi Maru and Kata energy is nothing but E epsilon sigma V, which we defined. So at, at the beginning, we write this sigma by B, but uh, this is uh, exactly our energy. So this is a special case of Kobayashi Maru and Kata energy for given U. Yes, this energy. And the important thing is uh, if B, B exists, the total energy might be uh, smaller than this uh, homogeneous situation. This is actually less than this one. Minimizing minim, minimum energy is actually less than uh, without, without B term. Okay, now we discuss uh, gamma limit under the graph convergence. So this M is for simplicity periodic uh, torus, torus period, so we consider everything periodic boundary condition, and the gamma be a set valued function on M. And uh, the set, uh, we set calligraphy B, the graph of ga gamma is just compact in M cross R. So this is upper totality of upper semi-continuous set valued function, and bounded upper semi-continuous set valued function. And the graph gamma is defined as usual. We say gamma j combines to gamma under the graph convergence. Shortly, I just write gamma j combines to gamma g. If the house of distance is going to tends to zero. So dh denotes house of distance. So, and if gamma j is gjx, we simply write gj. This is a little bit ab abuse of notation, but the gj tends to z. So this gamma j is a singleton, single value is a singleton, then we simply write this way. Uh, this idea, uh, this uh, graph convergence is of course popular in set valued analysis, for example, the book by Oban and Frankowska, Fra Fra the book. So we call the Modica Mortera single well Modica Mortera function and consider this extra term, right? And we consider F is uh, only zero minimum, and we call zero and all other theme. Oh, I'm a little bit sorry. The, yeah, this is V is, uh, v is, on, v is equal to one is only one, one unique, on, unique minimizer of F. And F is at least continuous and uh, the inf at the infinity is positive. And we set GV is a square root, integral of square root of F from one to V. And then we can actually uh, prove that the limit of this energy is uh, actually this form, E zero B S M M, that this limit is uh, E S zero M Xi. Xi is a, I think, set valued function and B is a minimum, this minimum value at A. And uh, and this is a uh, uh, at okay. What is SMM? This is a key point. This is a G depending on G and min E minus E plus for uh, class of the graphs uh, multi-valued function. And what is A? The set A is a uh, the set uh, is in B. And uh, this is a one except countable number of xi's, and xi xi is uh, some interval xi and xi plus, which includes one. 
one is minimal value, and this is the interval containing one. So one could be uh, this one of this value, right? So this is a set of A0. And uh, what is a, and uh, or the statement following, if we epsilon is, of course, this H1 is a very natural assumption, and it's continuous. If V epsilon tends to uh, xi in the graph sense, then this energy, uh, singular, uh, the uh, limit energy is uh, actually the mean infinite quality holds. In particular, if xi is in this A0, uh, uh, no, no, no. If the right hand side is finite, finite then xi must be in this set. That means C is uh, one except countable number of xi, and uh, this exceptional on the exceptional point xi, this C is interval containing one, close interval containing one, and the value of e zero C is just for uh, evaluating jump with G, right? And if you if you if we take f as a quadratic function, as we explain as example, then this value can be easily calculated and it agrees with our earlier observation. Okay, the what the supin quality, we have some recovery sequence, w epsilon, which combines to xi in the graph sense for any a0, right? So there is a sequence this way, okay? And the typical graph of Xi is showing Xi is one except countably many points. This is just three point. And uh, yes, this is just three point, but uh, we have some interval. This interval could be such kind of interval containing one in the interior point or the end point. This could be, there is such possibility. And uh, we also have some compactness. Uh, we have some additional conditions that if V is uh, uh, growing uh, in some sense coercivity at the infinity, that assumes that uh, V epsilon is uh, the singular modica, modica modular energy is bounded. Then there are some sequence such that this combines the some some chi in the graph sense. So this is a compactness result we also have it. And the convergence of the limit also says the uh, okay, this is a, just a co trivial corollary by now. And uh, if the gamma combined is approved and the compactness is approved, then the graph, uh, the minimi minimizer of the, uh, uh, minimizer combines in graph sense and the limit C0 minimize the limit energy. And uh, C0 Minimizer should be one if x not it's not equal to one and c zero a is uh, actually interval but interval from uh, some p zero to one and p zero is a minimizer of g p plus b p square p is less than uh, p is in between zero one so you can ha calculate and the minimizer of limit is if it's a uh, okay this is example uh, going back to our example. If f prime v is uh, has the same sign with v, then the g is convex, so that two g p plus b p square is strictly convex, or oh, strictly convex for b positive. In this case, the minimizer is unique. If f v is this square quadratic, so that g v is just v minus one square over two, then this two g p plus b p square is just p minus one square plus b p square. And it minimizes p0 is one, 1 plus p. The minimal value is exactly b over p plus 1. This is exactly what we observed our our area, uh, theory area example, right? This is exactly in this situation. Okay, I don't think I have enough time, maybe a few minutes. So I would like to go, go into one of our methods. It is very useful for one dimensional case. We, in some sense, we would like to unfold our, unfold our, so the graph becomes, uh, the graph becomes something like that, we would like to unfold, unfold the graph. So 
Yeah, yeah. Yoshi, we could barely hear you. It's in, impossible to see. Uh, we we can't hear you. Oh. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, microphone. Okay, sorry. Yes, the microphone. So if it's a, okay, it's a better to write the summary. Yeah. Okay, I just write. So basic idea is our our limit, uh, our our curve becomes uh, like that. But we would oh, becoming like this way and uh, much more sharper way. But we would like to unfold this something like this way. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a, something like so. Curve becomes uh, something like this. But we want to do like everything something like, yeah, trying to unfold. Okay, we introduce occurrence parameter. So the graph curve, uh, the inverse graph has always repeats and, and repeats constant to less than one or equal to one. So this is just a occurrence parameter. We, the inverse function is very useful. For you, for given function, we define unfolding u so that we replace uh, the variable by occurrence parameter of the graph of u. So this is the idea. No. Yeah, so this is important. Okay. Then the for, fortunately, this is a uh, u is always repeats and large u is always repeats and this repeats constant less than one and total variation the same. This is the basic property. So this is very good because if the total variation is bounded, then the for unfolding is a uh, converges locally uniformly for some some function v, and if v is total variation is of course uh, lower semi continuous with respect to the convergence. And repeats, uh, is also repeats and less than one. This is very good. And assume that u epsilon combines to v is something and u epsilon is taken as in lemma eight previous lemma. Assume that uh, this uh, uh, inverse function of occurrence combines to something, then the dim sup and the mean for this relax limit uh, can be calculated by using this big v. So this is uh, interesting. So uh, it's a little bit complicated. In theorem nine, we further assume that uh, if the limit of u epsilon k is uh, zero, uh, yeah, if sup tb is bounded, then the sup star is positive for at almost, at most countable x. Let, uh, let x xi denote such a set and gxi denotes a point, such point. And we decompose this point by uh, open intervals. So the, the what well, this is the picture. U epsilon is something like that. And uh, co yes, and the v, v is uh, unfolded limit. So the V looks like this type of uh, Lipschitz function. And except to x1, this, x, this place corresponds to x1, this place corresponds to x2. This place corresponds to x3. And the total variation, it just uh, can be calculated and it can be even estimated. I don't explain further, but it can be estimated. Then uh, the idea of the proof is uh, we use Modica Modica inequality at the Cauchy Schwarz inequality to estimate both. Okay, and uh, we apply theorem 10, and uh, the V is actually u epsilon is actually g of v epsilon and uh, and this v of epsilon tends to big v and big v can total by big v can be calcul cal cal calculated by estimating each uh, interval and uh, this row is dominated by ge xi plus g minus y for two of j's we thus obtain so we have uh, such kind of stuff so we, we need such things so we need such a lower thing quantity. And uh, the, if the, so this is a lower uh, inf inequality. And uh, if there's a boundary point of M that the proof is more involved. 
And、uh, I did not mention about the rim soup inequality. Rim soup inequality is、uh, just construction. It's, more,、uh, it's not so difficult. And I think the time is almost up. So I would like to explain the application of gamma limit. So once we know this type of、uh, stuff, we can calculate the gamma limit of E epsilon covariance variant Carter energy. And this is the limit. And、uh, it's very closely related to Manfred Schech. But what the difference is you have.、Uh, You have、uh, such kind of DI depending upon this one, and also Xi. This is quite different. Xi is the limit of uh, you, uh, limit function Xi. So,、uh, of course, we are now working with Okamoto and,、uh, and, uh, and with Sakai, with Sakai, and also the audience Sakaki Bara to extend the higher dimension. And in higher dimension, it is not so clear what is the natural topology. Graph convergence topology is too strong. Yeah. So I think this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you.、Uh, thank you, Yoshi, for your inspiring talk. I hope there are questions. The floor is open for discussion. I guess、uh, Michal wants to ask a question. Am I correct? Well, I mean, the, the most natural question to me was about higher dimension, which was already、uh, explained now. So,、uh, of course, now it makes me wonder what kind of topology is, is the good one. But,、uh, but well, I mean, pro probably we have to wait for that answer for the next paper.、Uh, by the way, do we allow、uh, our participants to unmute themselves now to ask questions? or...、Uh, yes. Okay, so, so if anyone wants. It may, may be asked also through the chat, but. Uh, uh, okay, so、uh, waiting for questions, let me ask one.、Uh, you mentioned the Mumford Sha functional. Do you expect some. Uh, uh, Improvements,、uh, new knowledge about the Mumford Sha by using your method. Yeah, I think、uh, you mean,、uh, okay, this, me this, me this, okay, what、um, the one, one interesting idea in this research, in my, in our research, is introduction of Mumfording to see everything very, it, it's very good one dimension. But the higher dimensional case this does not work so much for this unfolding idea.、Uh, so. You're right, but、uh, the, the Mumford Sha may be also studied in one dimension. So this will、yeah, be a problem. Uh, it's, uh, okay. The, the difficulty here compared with Mumford Sheikh is the Mumford Sheikh, the depth, okay, maybe I should say, this, if you, if you Study Mahon s h e k h even one dimension or several dimension, s this bottom should be always zero in Mahon s h e k h That's right. This is a very big difference. And if the, so, this means if there is a such kind of jump places, the total area of jump places should be a finite, right? Otherwise, its energy becomes infinity. So, infinite. So, if you try to understand everything one dimensional, In the form of one for the Sheikh, this continuity point、uh, is just finite. This is the difference, very, very big difference of our study. And、uh, you say the question whether man for the Sheikh problem, whether our method can apply to man for the Sheikh problem. I, it should be yes, but we did not try. I see. Yeah. yeah. I see. Thank you. So, I'm waiting for uh, uh, further questions. Maybe uh, uh, Piotr uh, Vermucha uh, would like to ask a, a question. So,、uh, while waiting for. Piotr? Are you trying to speak? <laughs> Maybe try to ask via chat because we cannot understand.
oh, I see some, some problems. So uh, let uh, me continue. Uh, when you stated the problem initially, I overlooked uh, the, the fact that you picked uh, a point inside the, the interval. I thought initially that uh, uh, your point is at the boundary. Oh, this one. This one yes, is perfect. inside, interior point. Yes, but uh, le nonetheless, let me ask you the question. Uh, what would happen if this point is at the boundary? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I did not mention, we did not mention, but this is also, it should be counted in the bound, if, if it's located at the boundary point, mm -hmm. but it's half, I think. I see. Yeah. So uh, you, you have to think about, yeah, this, you have to measure this jump. If you have a, a interior point, you measure just to jump twice. So that's the reason we have two. I see. If not of G. But in the boundary, there is just, to, I think, half, right? And so that, let uh, me, I see. Let me ask you an, another uh, stupid question. Is there any relationship between your problem and, uh, say, dynamic uh, boundary problems in uh, evolution problems? Okay, it's, this is not related to dynamic boundary conditions so far. It's related to, uh, of course, evolutional problem because I should say, I did not mention so much, oh, sorry. You mentioned the Kobayashi, Warren, Carter energy. Yes, this is a, a, actually Kobayashi, Warren, Carter uh, uh, proposed this model, but actually gradient flow of this model, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a, usually we say Kobayashi, Warren, Carter model uh, for the gradient system of this energy, right? And uh, this is uh, they introduced this model to explain the motion of brain boundary, and uh, there V is in some sense all the parameter, except grain uh, except boundary V is almost close to one, mm -hmm. and uh, U is uh, in some sense ang angular variable. So yes, angular variable. So of course, uh, this is S1 value, S2 value, or much more S, uh, complicated value. But anyhow, this is the basic idea of this, uh, basic idea to introduce this energy, right? So this is total variation energy, but uh, as inhomogenized by V, right? Yes, and this is a stationary problem itself is interesting. And I think uh, Professor Ken, we mentioned, Ken, Ken Shirakawa will mention of this much more detail about Kobayashi Warren Carter. And uh, for this energy, I didn't mention the Professor Moore, uh, the Professor Moore studied a lot uh, for this with, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Shirakawa and other people, I think. So this is a very important energy. And uh, I, what I, explain today is a very, very uh, beginning aspects of this Kobayashi Warren cut energy. By the way, not many people study the efficient limit of this Kobayashi Warren uh, mm -hmm. Carter model so far. This is my f mind uh, even the first to characterize this limit as efficient tends to zero, right? In even one dimension. It's even one dimension, it's no. <laughs> Uh, maybe Professor Novaga maybe have, may have an objection, but uh, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. About it. But at least as far as I know, this is the main first contribution. No, no. no objection. No objection. No okay, objection. good. Thank so you. Maybe you have referred the comments, Matteo. No, no, no. No. Meanwhile, I, I got a question in, in the chat from Professor Leszczyński. Uh, who says, okay, it starts that it's a naive question according to him, but in any case, what is the essential difference between one well and two well? I don't know if in the context, yes, in yes, the yes, context yes. Of, of this uh, thing or, or in general. Okay, your question is very fundamental and important. Okay, uh, this is one well, two well. Okay, if you have a double well, and if you have, for example, volume constraint, the, and if epsilon tends zero, and if you are interested in minimizer, the minimizer would like to have either one or minus one. And there must be uh, some uh, interface in between. But for single well, if you consider very naively, and then uh, uh, everything would like to be one, and nothing happens, 
Okay, so this is a uh, one difference between double wear and single wear. The double wear case is two phase, but single wear just uh, everything is just two, two phase. But it's a it's a it's a not so clear how to split. So mm -hmm. it's a I'm not sure my answer is the best answer, but. Uh, Okay, I don't know. Maybe that, that's a question to Professor Leszczyński, whether he's satisfied with that answer. Uh, but uh, this actually made me wonder about what would happen if you tried to apply your graph convergence uh, to, to this single, to the, sorry, to the double well case. Yes. Yeah, it also measures a jump of V. Okay, I should say I, I am not sure whether I can write somewhere. Uh, usually, in two, in double wear case, you just measure the this jump. But suppose that your your function looks like this way. Oh, I'm sorry. This way is not so good to write. Sorry, this way. Yes, then you also measure this. You also measure this jump. Oh no, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you consider the finite topology, like we we studied this time, then the limit is different. It's much bigger than uh, usual usual stuff. Uh, usually, I say this is usual limit for double wear case for L one. But if you take final limit, you you take even oscillation near. Near the, mm -hmm. near, the bound, near the phase boundary, right? So this is different. And the answer will be different. The energy becomes higher compared to this energy, L1 limit. Is this fine? So, yeah, yeah well, that's, use... that's uh, in general, that's what I would expect. But OK, thank you, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so this is my so is this uh, Is this uh, in some paper? this uh, result that you are speaking about now? Yeah, this is uh, already uh, submitted, but uh, not yet uh, not yet uh, accepted. So <laughs> it's just submitted. But it's uh, in some preprint? Yeah, preprint is available. Yeah. Okay, thank this you. One. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay, now Piotr Mucha asks me privately whether he can ask a very smart question. So please do. Of course. But Piotr, I think you have some problem with your microphone and we cannot hear you. So maybe ask the question via chat. Thanks now. Now we hear you too well. What do you mean? Ah, too well, okay. Maybe my set phone is not perfect. Now it's better? Much better. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so my question is quite simple as we have this double well potential. So uh, what is essential difference as we, instead of two uh, global minima, we have one global and one local minima? You are asking the difference of global minimum or yes, local Yes, I minimum. mean, as we have these two levels and these two levels are different. So one is uh, higher than the second one. So, oh, uh, I, I, okay. Uh, you, Okay, I'm a little bit confused by your question. First of all, if you have a double well poten double well. Oh, like this, precisely like this. As you ah, I see, I see. Okay, gamma, you are talking about gamma limit of this uh, Yes, stuff. yes, yes. What's the difference? Between what? Between this double, uh, double well or? The equation as we have uh, the same levels and the, the, the picture you draw. Okay, I see. I see. I let's uh, say this is a. So you are talking about double well, not single well, and uh, you have uh, two, two minimum but different uh, lengths. Uh, I would say that does not matter because we may uh, change this by uh, by adding a, an affine function. Yes, I think so. Just a fine function. Oh, okay. If you add, okay, add a fine function, yes, yes, exactly. Thank you very much. But I think you, I warn you, if you take uh, gamma limit in L1 sense and uh, this graph uh, topology sense, it, the answer will be different, right? Okay. Good. 
Can I ask a question? Lower yes. minimum. Oh, sorry. The lower minima uh, minimum will be more important. Yes. More yes. stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody wants uh, to ask a question. It was me, but if uh, if the move Mucha wants to keep talking, he, he should be allowed to keep talking. <laughs> No, I think that Demucha has finished his question, so okay. please go ahead. Um, thanks for the talk, Yoshi. Very interesting. Um, I just have a very basic question. You mentioned the um, Steiner problem um, with the approximation approach just at the beginning, and I wondered if you have any result uh, that has application to that problem. So, say, say it again. Which problem? The Steiner say problem. Malford Sach problem? No, no, Steiner. No, the, the Steiner problem. You know where you have like a number of distinct points and you have to find the measure of the. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm not so familiar with this problem, but uh, yeah, this yeah, guy this studied. Yeah, this guy yeah, studied. I look, this is a, like a three page paper. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and it has uh, just but, the. But the important thing here is also uh the 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 bottom of this v function the bottom v function always zero in this paper too so it is the main difference between co uh, between covariance and kata type problem right limit limit of covariance and kata problem is the depth of v and order parameter at the boundary is zero uh, it's not necessarily zero but here the bottom of the bottom of V function, all the parameter must be zero for each line in this Steiner problem. Yeah, so this is different. And thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Do we have further questions? Uh, there is always a possibility to uh, meet interested party in a breakout room. So. There is uh, plenty of opportunities for discussion. Uh, but uh, Michal, do you see any question over chat? No, 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 I don't see any further questions. So maybe we can uh, prepare for the next talk in this case. And let us uh, thank again Yoshi for his inspiring talk and uh, the stirring of discussion. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening. And, uh, uh, our next speaker is Professor Matteo Navaga of the Università di Pisa, and he will be talking about fattening for non-local non-local mean curvature uh, flows. Yes, which uh, is not far from the previous one, from the previous talk. Yeah, I wanted to try to use my, my tablet. Is it possible to write on the tablet if I yes. connect? Uh, let yes. me try to, sorry, I should, I guess, connect. Uh, uh, connect. Uh, try to connect with the tablet for a moment and see. Maybe uh, you, you have to allow me. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just, uh, I just did. You did it. Yes. Uh, and now we should have a new user iPad Di Matteo. It is here, but we don't see it. Yeah, I see how I had to now share my, how is share Maybe my I will ask, ask to start video. Maybe it will help you somehow. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Mm. Uh, chat. Maybe. No, I'm just uh, looking how to share the screen. Ah, may maybe here. Up uh, downstairs. You should be able to. Just a moment, eh? Perfect. Uh -huh.
we can see your we can see your screen. You can see and you, you can yes. hear me also. Okay. You can hear me. Yes, yes. yes. Ah, okay, thanks a lot. Okay, so I can start. Thanks for Yeah, I guess it's the time for, for starting. So ah, okay. So thanks for the for, for the kind invitation. It's a pity not to be all together in Warsaw. Um, I want to talk about uh, okay. In fact, I will start from a recent uh, recent work uh, which just just published, which I did. Uh, it's a joint work with its authors, and um, I will start by by presenting this work, which is mostly in two dimension and also discuss uh, which are I think it, there are. In fact, there not much is known in this, so I will maybe discuss some possible uh, uh, open problems. Uh, so first of all, okay, it's uh, about uh, a specific uh, kind of non-local mean curvature flow. So I will introduce uh, all the relevant, uh, okay, so um, just a moment, let me this. I will introduce the relevant quantities. So first of all, there is a, the mean curvature flow is a gradient flow of a perimeter. So I will introduce the non-local perimeter I'm considering. There is the non-local perimeter. Okay, there have been a lot of works, uh, mostly after this uh, seminal paper by Caffarelli, Rokhjof, Savin about the fractional perimeters and this type of non-local perimeters are just an extension of that. So there is in fact uh, a kernel K from uh, Rn to R, which is a kernel of the perimeter. And I will assume that K is positive, is radially symmetric, radial, and has some kind of some uh, mild integrability condition. So in particular that uh, the integral of the minimum between one and modulus of x, k of x is finite. So k is not, in fact, the behavior at infinity is not very important for this type of problems. Now, what is important, because essentially, uh, okay, let's say, in any, what is important here, just to, to point out that K is not a, a L1, but can have some singularity at the origin, but in su such that uh, modulus of X, K of X is integrable. So typical example, uh, typical example of a kernel of this type, for example, is, one over x to the n plus s with s in zero one. And this, for example, is a kernel uh, related to the fractional perimeter. Now the notion of perimeter, pk of a set E, E subset again, is just the integral between the set and the complementary of the kernel. which is of course it's a positive. So it's a positive functional. It has uh, several properties. Uh, it's positive and uh, it's lower semi-continuous for L1 convergence. And, uh, and it, generalizes, uh, it generalizes the fractional perimeter, which is when the kernel is this one here. The fractional perimeter has this param fractional parameter S in zero one, and it's a sort of an interpolation between volume and perimeter. In the sense that it sort of approximates in a suitable gamma convergence sense, volume when S goes to zero and perimeter when S goes to one. And this is just a, a more general, a more general. Uh, of course, if K is only, uh, if K for instance is in L1, this becomes, uh, a volume term, it's more similar to a volume term. So if K is very weak, you have to think that this non-local perimeter is more similar to a volume. So some, something like some, you imagine you could lose some compactness or regularity properties. So there are some analogies, but also some differences with the classical perimeter. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the, the energy. And, uh, okay, 
and then it's the non-local mean curvature. Uh, just a moment. He, this non-local mean curvature is the first variation. Mean curvature is the first variation of uh, of, of this non-local perimeter. And this define up to constants, which are not uh, a, uh, okay, the number of x, where x is a point on a boundary of a set E, is just the integral of the characteristic function. Characteristic function, I mean a function which is one inside and zero outside, or the complementary minus the characteristic function of a set E. Uh, sorry. That's why. And this, in case, it, this has to be intended in a, uh, a, in a, a say, as a principal integral in the sense that you have to take out a little ball in case this is not absolutely convergent, if K is not in L1, if K is in L1, it's, there is no problem. So in that case, as usual, you have to take out a little ball around the point X and pass to the limit as the radius goes to zero. So it's defined in, in the, in this uh, generalized sense. So this one is a mean curvature, and the, as I say, it's a first variation. It has uh, some, uh, okay, some property, for example, as a remark, uh, as a remark, AK is on convex sets. That's why uh, it's integrated it's a kernel integrated on the complementary minus the kernel inside and not vice versa. And the reason is because by convention, we want that the mean curvature of a ball is positive and not negative. So that's why. So it's exactly, I repeat, this one is just the integration of the kernel outside minus the kernel inside. The fact is, if the kernel is not in L1, you have to interpret, the, uh, yeah, there is a cancellation of the infinites uh, around the ball. Okay, once you have the non-local, mean curvature as a first variation, you can uh, discuss, you can uh, consider the non-local mean curvature flow. Which is the usual thing, which is the velocity. This one is a normal velocity. So a uh, non-local mean curvature flow in the level set formulation. Level set, which means that um, uh, uh, you, you, you want to write the equation such that each level of the equation, for example, sub-level set, for instance, evolves by velocity equal mean curvature. So here you have uh, uh, u of the set, u, for example, minus u of xt. Uh, okay, uh, in the point X. Okay, so I'm okay. I'm writing here uh, the set. Here, this one is the set where I compute uh, the mean curvature. In the sub, in a point X, I, I consider the mean curvature at the point of the sub-level set u minus u x t. Okay. This, for this, uh, of course, uh, now uh, you have to multiply here. So typically it's better to write it in this way, as usual, not to have a possible division by zero. And um, for this, for this one, there is, there is a good uh, viscosity existence and uniqueness. So viscosity, let me write viscosity theory, which means essentially that uh, there exists uh, by, this was by Chambol, Morini, Ponsiglione in, in this generality. And before was also by Cyril Lambert, specific, more specifically for the, um, for the fractional perimeter, so the fractional mean curvature flow. 
but it has been generalized in this paper by Chambol, Mogini, and Possiglione. So in particular, there exists a unique solution, viscosity solution. Viscosity solution under the usual assumption that the initial datum has to be, for example, uniformly continuous and uh, visco uh, viscosity. Let me also mention, as a remark, that uh, in the case P K in the case P K equal P S, so in particular in this case H K is the usual fractional mean curvature, just the same but with that specific kernel. There exists also a short time existence of regular solution. of a short time existence of regular solution and uniqueness, of course, and unique. Uh, the general, in, in this generality, short time existence and uniqueness are not known, but uh, we, we will consider for the moment only the, the viscosity solution, which we well established. And now, as a, one could, uh, could uh, now talk about the fat, possible fattening, The fattening phenomenon, which is which means uh, it happens when uh, when starting from a set E, for example, when the solution, if you consider the solution, uh, for example, if U is a solution such that uh, U uh, u zero, uh, sorry, u x zero less than zero is my given set E. Now I have that, um, and essentially what, what oh, uh, we say that you, the evolution develops fattening if uh, u of x t equal zero at some point develops. And here, of course, I want also that uh, this usually it's that u of x zero equal zero as measured zero. So we consider a solution which starts for a given initial set. Typically, it's a regular set, but not necessary in this generality. We take the evolution, and if at some point t greater than zero, there is this fact, then essentially, this means that you have a possible, two possible choices, u of xt less than zero or less than or equal to zero. And so this means that the fact the, the fattening phenomenon. Fattening means that the level set becomes fat, and it means that you have a geometric non-uniqueness. So you have at least two solutions, and in fact, you have a phenomenon like the Peano phenomenon of non-uniqueness for geometric solutions. So it, it, the fattening is a singularity from which you have two possible solutions, and then infinitely many, in fact, and so you have a, a, a non-uniqueness of the geometric evolution. Of course, you always have uniqueness of the level set solution because that is unique. But the geometric one, which means the level set, is not with geometric non-uniqueness. Mm, now, it's not difficult. It's not difficult. Uh, so that's a dif my definition, the usual definition of fattening. And it's not difficult to show that there are situations where uh, you don't have any fattening phenomenon. And uh, uh, for example, as a, if you want theorem, but the theorem uh, uh, sort of uh, reproduces the, 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 the analog, an, analog results for uh, the mean curvature flow, the classical mean curvature flow. So they are not uh, very difficult. So there are two cases, and uh, which means, um, uh, which are, for example, if E, if the initial set, E is my initial set, from which I construct this u0, and then I, I, I solve uh, the, the evolution by the viscosity theory. If E is regular enough, 
so that I can speak about its mean curvature. Is regular enough? Typically, C11 is enough, no? but it's regular. C1 alpha probably is enough. And HK of X is greater than some, some delta greater than zero uh, for, for any X. Then one can show this is positive, positive mean curvature initial, strictly positive, in fact, positive mean curvature initial condition. This implies that the set wants to go always inside, always inside, at least at time zero. But this implies that this, this condition is preserved by the, by the evolution. And we can write this uh, by saying that uh, ut is always greater than delta du in the viscosity sense. Uh, OK, if I write in this way, uh, I have to say for all xt uh, in the level set uh, with uh, uh, u of x t equal zero, because u starts. So it, it means that the fact that the set goes inside is preserved by the by the evolution law in this uh, in this um, viscosity sense. And also, what is important is that uh, essentially, uh, the, and there is no fattening, and no fattening. Now, the reason, which means essentially that the zero level set uh, becomes, it goes always inside, becomes always, its boundary is always measured zero. And uh, so you, you can have singularities. As you know, in this case, you can have singularities because, for example, you have an example like the Grayson example, which you can do also in, uh, well, you can do an example like this also in 2D. So let me write like uh, for, for some kernels, like for the, for PK equal PS, you have examples of this type. And then you go, and then you go inside like that. So this is in time, no? Time, time steps. So you can have singularities under this assumption, but you do not have fattening. Essentially, how do you show that you do not have fattening? But because um, you can compare, you can use, uh, everything here is based from this uniqueness of the viscosity solution on the comparison principle. And these evolutions all satisfy the comparison principle. And so it's, uh, and this is due to the fact that the kernel is positive. If you remove the assumption that the kernel is positive, it becomes much more complicated because you have a, a, the comparison principle does not always solve. It's, it's, it's another problem. But if K is positive, you have comparison principle. And here you can compare a solution at a certain time with a solution at a time a little later and use the, solution, the same solution at different times as barriers, one for the other by starting the solution a little earlier or a little later. And in this way, you show that you cannot have no uniqueness. So that's, that's the idea. I don't enter the proof, but the proof follows the same idea as in the classical mean curvature. And there is another situation. So it's always based on, 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 bar on constructing suitable barriers. The proof usually that you have or you do not have uh, fattening. Barriers, I mean, super and sub solutions for, for uh, which you can use to, to, to trap your actual solution or to com compare. Second situation, there is in some sense similar, even if it's a different condition, if A is star shaped, and PK is equal PS, then no fattening. And again, uh, again, uh, here the idea is that if A is star shaped, I can rescale E, the set E, sorry, the set E, I can rescale a bit, and then I have a set which is bigger, but it contains the original one, or I can reduce it. Now, if I take exactly the fractional perimeter, 
there is, if I evolve a rescale set, I just get a rescaled evolution. So the, the, all the evolution, also for later time, just rescaled. So I can again trap my solution between some, some two rescaled solutions. But this, um, this property works if you have a sort of a, um, an homogeneous func a fraction, non-local mean curvature. So if you have a general uh, kernel, I don't know, it's not completely obvious. You cannot use, because if you rescale a set, the evolution is not uh, the, uh, the rescaling of the, of the evolution. It does not commute. That's why here I had to add the condition. That... Okay, these are sort of classical results. Now let's move to one more specific case in 2D. We want to consider the simplest case in 2D where we have fattening, which is the cross. So in this case, we have a cross in 2D. So my set E is this. So here you see, you have a set which has a singularity here at the, in the origin. Now, the classical solution for the classical mean curvature flow, what you have in the classical case, is that you have here um, the solution becomes you have it you have different possible solutions so you have uh, this one which is just u less than zero and all this part where well, u is equal to zero. And so in this case, you have a fattening phenomenon. So our question was, uh, what happens uh, for, a general, um, for a general kernel? And essentially, uh, that's a, a just a, a simple example. These amounts, so for a general k, This amounts to compute essentially uh, to construct suitable barriers, which means essentially you want to compute uh, just to simplify a little bit. If you consider a set like that, which is an approximation to these two, uh, so essentially the reason is that this singularity, very symmetric singularity, uh, creates two possibilities for the evolution. Either the two parts join of the two parts separates. So uh, to, if you want to construct suitable barriers to show if it's convenient, to, if it's possible to separate uh, or to join, for example, you have to essentially compute what is HK of X, for example, in this point X here, but in fact, in any point here, and uh, which will be something depending in terms, for example, of the distance, which is some function, will be some function phi of modulus of x here, and uh, which will go to zero as modulus of x goes to zero. So I, I indicate this point, but in fact, I'm interested in the curvature of all this part. This curvature will go to zero when I approach the singularity because essentially there is an effect coming from, uh, from the other part here. And the question is how it goes to zero. So it goes to zero, um, uh, it goes to zero fast enough in such a way that if I consider the ODE, I can have a non-uniqueness phenomenon like in the Peano situation, uh, slow enough in such, so that I have a, a non-uniqueness or fast enough so that in fact I have uniqueness. And this depends on the strengths of the singularity. And essentially there is a, a technical condition, but in fact, uh, at the end, if you do this simple computation, in fact, it's a simple computation, you can show that uh, if, uh, if K is integrable enough in, at the origin, so for example, if K of S is less than or equal than constant X to the alpha, which alpha less than or equal than one, so you cannot be too singular at the origin. In some ball, in B row zero, 
For example, this implies in fact integrability. There's no fattening. No fattening and the solution is equal to E. And uh, this means essentially that E of T is equal to E, which is a cross. So th there is no evolution, no possible evolution. You start from the cross, you remain the cross. And uh, if on the other hand, K of X is greater than a constant uh, X to the alpha for alpha greater than one in a ball, then it's convenient to separate. It's convenient to separate and then there is pattern. Uh, okay, so now of course, uh, uh, it essentially is due to this computation. In any case, as a remark, in any case, the cross is not a minimizer. For this is not surprising because essentially, uh, if you compute the, the curvature here in this point X, is it true that this curvature is always positive? Which means essentially that it's always convenient energetically to separate. If you cut this part or add, you can cut, of course, or equivalently, you could add. It's the same, either you add or you cut. But the fact that the perimeter, you always gain in perimeter. The problem for the fattening is not that you gain, but you want to gain uh, enough uh, so that really you can uh, start the evolution and separate. So to be a minimizer and to produce fattening are two different uh, issues. So this is not a minimizer for PK. Uh, but, but it could be that if K is not strong enough, you still stay, you are not a minimizer, but you are sort of a critical point and you, ca you cannot leave the critical point. The evolution just stays at the critical point. Now, it, 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 we, what we did, we did not know, but could be, so in particular, uh, as a remark, for the fractional perimeter, for the fractional microvature flow, you always have fattening of the cross because you enter in the second condition. For the fractional microvature flow, you are in this condition here, right? Because in fact, uh, we are, uh, the exponent alpha will be between two and three. Now, a possible question here, well, I don't have much time, so let me just go a little quick. It's a possible question. Question, what happens? Mm. So it's, a, it, uh, it's a, in fact, it's why it's very open, this fat, these examples of for fattening for the non-local microwave flow. This is just one single and very and the simplest possible example. Just a possible question, which is very related, which we, all, we already don't know very well, is what happens if you start from a cross, which has angles alpha and beta, alpha less than pi over two. Even, uh, even is not clear even for Yes. Uh, for example, what it could be possible here, but I don't know, is that there exists a critical angle such that uh, below a critical angle, if the angle is alpha is too small, it's always convenient to split in the direction of the in the direction of the of alpha of this uh, smaller angle, and if the angle is big enough, close to pi over two, then it's you have two possibilities, and so you have, in fact, fat. That's a possible question. And then, of course, another very another interesting question, which is even which is of course more interesting. And then I stop always in two D. I'm talking only about two D. Uh, there exists uh, uh, example example. There exists fattening. starting from a smooth curve. Mm. From regular. Because of course, the fattening phenomenon is particularly interesting as an example of non uniqueness starting from smooth. You start from a smooth set, you, have, you develop a singularity, and the question is, 
can you develop a singularity where you have no uniqueness starting from a smooth evolution? This, of course, uh, it's, uh, of course, oh, here even for PS, uh, the answer to the second question, these two questions are, of course, easy in the classical case. And the, in the classical case, for the usual curvature flows, the shortening flow, you always have fattening for any alpha. And the second question, you never get fattening from a regular curve because, as you know, a regular curve, family of regular curves, they remain disjoint. And each, each one will become convex at some point and shrink to a point. And so in particular, this, uh, you don't have this. Uh... Let me just finish with the final question, which is not related to the evolution, but related to the remark here at the beginning, which I think it's an interesting question. And again, the problem is always, already for PS, remark. Uh, is uh, the, the usual cone uh, modulus of x uh, equal modulus of y where uh, x uh, y is in r uh, m time m uh, in r. a minimizer for m big enough mm. Of course, the, the, the ideal, the, quest, the real question, which, which one could imagine the answer could be true, is for n equal four, which is the, the example where it becomes a minimizer even for the usual perimeter. But the question could be reasonable, so for n equal two, n equal three, I don't know. It's, uh, it's um... But this one, this, so sorry, is not a remark, but this one is a question, even with this one, I can conclude, it's a question. And I think, Okay, it, it's related, but this one is a stationary. It's a static question. Okay, I think I, 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 in fact, by writing, one goes a little more slow, slowly, but in fact, I wanted essentially to say this, and uh, I thank you all for the attention. Thank you, Marta, for your talk and for uh, Blackboard uh, style lecture. And I guess there are questions. I guess uh, Glenn uh, wants to say something. You probably just heard my son make some yes. exclamation. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm with the family here. Um, thank you, Matteo, for your uh, talk. It was fascinating. Um, I think it's really interesting how things are progressing with non-local curvature flow. Um, in your talk, you described a method to obtain uniqueness by moving forwards and backwards in time. Um, and I figure that this, whether this works or not depends on estimates for something related to continuous dependence on data. Do you have a good reference for that, that where I could read that method being used? Uh, about continuous dependence, for example, or I mean, I mean, for the uniqueness idea where, that you mentioned, where you can start the flow a little bit before, a little bit after, and use that to to prove that uniqueness. Yes, is we, well, we old. have this. Yes, well, we, we wrote this in, a, in these two examples. We wrote in detail in a in a paper, which I can, if you want, I can send you the the link. Where, yeah, please. Yeah. yeah, where we discussed these two examples, where we were able to to use a comparison with, uh, yeah. Matteo, if, if it's not difficult, you could send it uh, via chat. Ah, the link, ah, yes, yeah. of, the, of the paper where, just a moment, eh? maybe. Okay, I sent the link from my web page, not from the archive, but it's okay. And here there is an example, uh, essentially all what I said is, is uh, contained here in this. Uh, okay. Thanks. Thank you, Matteo. In this paper here. Uh, I guess we, we have further questions. Uh, I mean, I have one. Yes, uh, so, so I know that uh, you had in some maybe other work, um, uh, an axiomatic definition of curvature of sorts. Uh, so can you do some of these things that you showed here, where, for instance, you don't have fattening also in this case of axiomatic 
curvature because here you just treated uh, non-local curvature with some kernel. Yeah, okay. In fact, it, it's, uh, it's not by me, but it is, it's in a paper by Chambord, Morini, Ponsiglione, where they have this axiomatic, uh, ge very general perimeters and curvatures, which are, this one are just an example, this is not one. I don't know, it's an interesting question, but I don't know. In fact, it could be interesting to, to, to check some simple, um, simple question in, in that setting. For example, if the cross is never a minimizer or for which it is. I, I never, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think, yeah, it's an interesting, because of course it, it, it's, more, it's, more, it's a little more difficult to work with those because it's just, as you say, axiomatic. So you're just uh, some uh, very general condition like uh, subadditivity, like which guarantee essentially the lower semi-continuity in the comparison, but you don't have an expression for the mean curvature. In that. So, yeah, but never, for instance, never, yeah. I was wondering about this statement with positivity, for instance, that you, you have positivity of curvature, then something good happens. Uh, so this one, for, for example, instance... Preserved by the evolution, for example, mm, the convex is preserved by the evolution. Yeah. yeah. This is, this is a very general fact because essentially, uh, and so it could, be, it could be that this one can be, can be proved uh, more, more generally because the positivity of the evolution, uh, the fact that the positivity of the culture is preserved, you can read that ut, the velocity essentially, uh, is greater than a constant times du. And then you, want, you have to show that this type of condition is preserved by the viscosity solution. So it could be that, uh, but in fact, I also don't. I never really oh. worked with those okay. monkeys. But there is this one preprint where, where you are also among the authors, I'm pretty sure, uh, or, or a paper. Cesaroni Luca, De Luca Novaga Ponsiglione. Okay, I will not press you about that, but because there, are, there I saw this axiomatic definition. But okay, if you are not ready to talk about it now, then don't worry. Uh, which one? Just a moment. Can take a look. There is. Uh, it's a uh, Cesaroni de Luca Novaga Ponsiglione. It's March uh, twenty twenty. But uh, okay, maybe you are not uh, really concerned with this part so so it doesn't ah, matter in this case but but it's a it's a, uh, can you just uh, tell, okay yeah, maybe. well I, I can send you sure but uh, okay in any case uh, uh, i thought maybe uh, sorry maybe let me how do i send it here everyone okay i got it so it's here Ah, yes, sorry, no, okay, no, here, here we discussed uh, just, uh, okay, it's true, it's true. This is related to the general evolutions uh, studied by Chambol, Morini, Ponsiglione, and what is done here is just uh, something they didn't do, I don't know why, but it's uh, something which in some sense is standard in this case, which is stability, which means if you change a little bit the operator and the initial datum, and you have some sort mm -hmm. of continuous convergence, then you have convergence of the solutions. And this is useful uh, to prove something like, uh, for example, if you are in some regime where the mean curvature goes to the usual mean curvature, for example, the fractional mean curvature when S goes to one, for example, well, then the solution will go to the usual uh, mean curvature flow. And this is, is a consequence of a general stability result, which is well known in the usual viscosity theory, and it was missing in this uh, paper by where they introduced, they did exist in mix, they didn't do stability. So in this sense, yes, we... we... Okay, so, okay. But, but in any case, I understand that concerning this positivity, you, you didn't do calculations, uh, but uh, maybe, it's, maybe, maybe it's to be expected. I don't know. Well, depends. Much more difficult to conclude, much more difficult is under which conditions convexity mm -hmm. is preserved. Mm -hmm. That, even in this non-local case, is not clear which condition on the kernel, for example, will guarantee that convex set remains... Like re real convexity, not just positive curvature. Yeah. Positive curvature should be much more general. Convexity could be more specific and maybe there is some condition. Okay. So, yes. 
Okay, I, I see that Professor Giga has a question on the fattening also. Okay. So. Can I ask a question? Uh, you, you mentioned the fattening of cars uh, in 2D case, and you start with cross, and uh, you say the kernel has an estimate from below of some power x to alpha, mod x, one over mod x uh, to alpha. If alpha mm. is great than one, the fattening occurs. Mm -hmm. So, so the one is in some, the power one is uh, in some sense is critical, but this is not the critical power for in integrability. Yeah, in so, fact, it's a little surprising. Why? Are, why are, are one is a critical? So, it's, do you have any heuristic reason? Uh, it's just because uh, you 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 see essentially how the velocity, mm -hmm. how the velo how the micro if you cut a little piece at distance mm -hmm. r. You want and you want to compute the microvature, uh -huh. the microvature will be of the order r to the alpha, r to the beta, r to some exponent. Uh, and okay. uh, if you cut a, a, from that, now I don't have the picture to share, but if you cut this little square mm -hmm. and compute the microvature, let's say you are a distance r from the origin, mm -hmm. uh -huh. the, the microvature there is r to some exponent beta, with uh -huh. beta positive. But mm -hmm. if beta is between zero and one, you are mm -hmm. in a situation of non-uniqueness because it's like r dot equal r uh, to z. Uh -huh, if uh -huh. it is greater or equal than one, you are in a uh -huh. uniqueness situation. Uh -huh. I see. The beta equal one there corresponds to that alpha equal one. So uh -huh. it comes out from that computation. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It was expected at the beginning that it was a question of integrability, but I see. that uh, even if it's integrable, but with uh -huh. a strong similarity, it's enough to have uh, this. I see, I see, uh -huh. I see. So this they is come a, from that computation of the curvature. And then okay, so this is just to take, uh, just think about the power, then the power yeah. of the power, uh, power a uh, gross of me curvature, uh, is, and this is uh, yes. uh, gross of and there is an ODR. Yeah. yeah, then uh, you got it. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have further questions? Yeah, we have. Glenn Wheeler has a sub question, right? Glenn, do you ask? A, do you do you wish to ask a further question? I, I can, but I'm really very happy to just let other people talk. <laughs> Apparently, everybody everybody's waiting for you. Oh, please go. Um, ahead. Okay, um, Matteo, just at the end of your talk, you mentioned um, no fattening for regular curves in the plane. Uh, by Grayson, but I mean, do you you mean embedded curves, right? Embedded curves, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In that the was classical curves. The classical yeah. Curves. So, so for immersed curves, um, what what exactly is is known for immersed curves? Uh, now, now the problem for uh, so I have two comments on this. In the in the classical shortening flow. Uh, for for if you take an immersed curves, there is an issue of how to define, in fact, a weak solution. Because if you take the level set formulation, as soon as you have any crossing, you have fattening, always. Because essentially, you can uh, uh, exit a crossing in two ways. Now, if you want to, if, if not, of course, you could uh, consider the evolution of an immersed curve, and uh, and then uh, you can have, in some sense, in that case, also you do not have. Uh, not the level set, but the evolution, but parameterized the evolution of the mass curve. In that case, you can have singularities, but the singularities are only cusp-like. And so it, it, you, it, these are resolved in a unique way. So if you parameterize, in fact, you have uniqueness also, uniqueness of the evolution with a certain type, ta, uh, with a finite amount of uh, singularity, which are cusp-type or shrinking to a point. Uh, th there is no analog, it's not been studied really, the evolution of immersed curves for the non-local mean curvature. Because you have, first of all, to understand how to define the operator, and then nobody, in fact, uh, works. I think it's maybe possible because you can, you can rewrite the mean curvature as double integral on the curve itself. Once you have that, that's it's an intrinsic, uh, and you could sort of parameterize and uh, just a comment concerning my last question about regular curves in for the fractional mean curvature flow a, a regular curve you can have a phenomenon like Grayson phenomenon so a regular curve like that can develop a singularity 
like uh, a, a neck, a shrinking neck. This happens already in 2D. But you expect that once you have that, you have only one way to go out. So I, I, I would expect, but that's my expectation, that for regular curves in the non-local setting, you can have singularities, but in 2D, you do not have fattening. But that is a vague idea. I don't, I don't know how to prove it, for example. Sounds pretty reasonable. <laughs> because it's a tangent singularities. It's not, a, never, yeah. never happen across it, I guess. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Do you have further questions? Meanwhile, I have missed a question from Professor Leszczynski that he asked me on the private chat. Again, uh, about real life applications of this fattening or non not fattening. So I don't know, maybe you would like to say a few words about that. Uh, I, I don't know, L let's say this, this mean curvature flows and also sometimes the fraction mean curvature flow uh, appears in, for the classical mean curvature flow in many models. Uh, and for example, a fade transition like that. What is what fattening means is just that you have a, 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 an, an initial datum which evolve in a critical situation where you have two possible two, uh, non uniqueness. And uh, of course, in the physical situation, you always have some typically some, I guess, some noise, some perturbation. And uh, the fact that it just means that there is a configuration where even if you, ha you, ha if you have a little noise, you can evolve essentially in two ways by going, at some point you have a, a, a situation where you can choose two possible evolution, only two if you have some, some possible noise, but, but, but not only one. So it, <laughs> there are situations where you have, it's no, no uniqueness. Uh, so it's, I don't know if it's, it probably is not a complete answer. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's maybe it's enough. Maybe uh, maybe okay. Now there is another comment, Professor Leszczynski, I think you can use like try to change to to public chat because the, the comment is maybe multi-phase transitions. I don't know. Well, I guess we are mathematicians here, <laughs> so maybe someone else could say more. Do we have further questions? Have I reached my limit? <laughs> uh, go, go on. All right, I'm sorry. Um, the idea of fattening for immersed curves, I find it really interesting because um, in, the, in a lot of curvature flow, it's not really possible to preserve embeddedness. So it's interesting to have a more robust theory when you only have immersions. Um, and I, I was wondering if you thought about the idea of, uh, so if you, for example, if you have a planar curve, um, lifting, adding one direct dimension, making like a ramp and doing the level set flow for the ramp. This was an old idea, I think of Kalabi. Uh, you, you mean in the non-local setting or in the, in the, yeah. In the non-local setting. Yeah. Yeah, because in the local setting, there is a paper where they constructed a solution like that by, by maybe Al Schuller was, yeah. Al Schuller Grayson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I never, I never thought. In fact, I never, I never thought about how to define uh, properly a, an evolution, a you know, local evolution for a mass curve. But I think uh, in principle it's possible at least to start because you can formulate, uh, which is a starting point, the evolution at, integral only on the curve, not outside, because there, for immersed, you don't have outside, a clear notion of outside and inside, but if you, double in, if you write as a double integral on the curve, let's say for the fractional, to, not for a general curve, fractional mean curvature, double integral on the curve is possible. So in principle, what you say could be possible, I don't know, yeah, to try to, 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 to write for an immersed curve, yeah. Yeah, okay. The, it, similar question is if you want to define for a curve in Act 3, the evolution. Again, you don't have an inside or an outside, and you need to define the evolution in a in more intrinsic way, which is in principle possible at least to write the equation. Yeah, you could solve the plateau problem maybe. 
Anyway, okay, I'll stop talking. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank. You. Let us thank Matteo again. Okay, thank you. A little clapping. Uh, um, now it's time uh, to move forward, but uh, before we do this, uh, let me remind you that uh, I created a breakout room, so if uh, someone needs to talk, to discuss things, uh, we may use this space. And let me remind you that I will, uh, all talks are recorded, and at some point I will send out links to, to the records, but if uh, you're impatient, please bug me. But certainly I will not, I will not uh, send out links today, maybe later. This needs, this needs some preparation. Excuse me, but maybe you should say, how does one use those breakout rooms? Did you mention uh, that? No, I didn't mention that. The thing is, uh, uh, you must request uh, and uh, to go to the breakout room and you will be there for a private discussion for the time you wish. I see. Okay, uh, now uh, we would like to uh, invite Professor Marta Latorre uh, from Universidad Rey Juan Carlos to give a talk on evolution problem involving the one Laplacian operator, Marta. But before you start your talking, uh, the, the name of the university sounds new. Is it correct? The name of the university is the same. I'm in the, since I was in the University of Valencia uh, some years ago, but now I am working in Rey Juan Carlos. Okay. It's not anyway, new. The name hasn't changed. Okay, thank you. So, uh, please uh, start your talk. Okay, uh, I think that everybody is now what's in the, the slides. Yep. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, first, um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation and for the effort that uh, they have done to change the, the dates of the Congress and then to change it to an, an online Congress. I want to present a joint work with Sergio Segura de Leon, and it is about an evolution problem involving the one Laplacian operator. Um, we have proof an existing young, an unique result for this problem when we have an elliptic equation with the one Laplacian operator. We will work in C dot times Omega, where Omega is a bonded set in Rn with a smooth boundary. Uh, here, lambda is a positive parameter. Omega t is the time derivative uh, of Omega in the sense of distribution. And uh, nu is the unit of one normal vector on the boundary. Uh, the datum uh, g is in L1, C0, T, L2 on the boundary. And the initial datum L2 is an a square integrable function. Uh, a similar problem was, uh, was proved by Howard and Mathon, but uh, what we are done is uh, to prove the existence of uniqueness following um, the, the strategy by Andreu, Ibida, Mazón, and Toledo. Uh, they proved in 2006 uh, that there exists a solution to uh, a similar problem, but instead of using the one Laplacian operator, they use the P Laplacian. Uh, using uh, well the one sorry, they define um, operator, and using the nonlinear semigroup theory, they prove that there exists a main solution to this problem. And finally, this main solution becomes in, um, a solution in the sense of distribution. 
One may think that since we know that there exists a solution to this problem with the pilaplasian, we can use that, uh, the result uh, and take limits when p goes to 1 and then see if the limit uh, function is the solution for our problem. But we cannot follow this strategy because uh, we cannot pass to the limit. So what we have done is uh, to follow the strategy of Andreu Vida Mazzon and Toledo, but uh, having into account the particularities of the Malaplasian well, operator. Uh, for example, when we work with the Pilaplasian, we look for solutions in the Sobolev space W1P. Uh, but for the Pilaplasian, we cannot work in the Sobolev space W1. Instead, we use the set of bond variation, BB. We say that a function is a bond variation function in, in, if it is integrable and is derivative. In the sense of distributions, it's a radon measure with finite total variation. We also need another tool that it is the vector field set, which will play the role of the quotient du over the total variation, which doesn't appear in problems with the pilaplasian with p bigger than one. Well, uh, another thing that we need is the pairing set du. Angelotti was, uh, gave this definition in, in 1983, and uh, this pairing uh, can be considered like a generalization of the scalar product between set and du when set and u are good enough functions. Andreu Casillas and Mazón were the first ones in using uh, this pairing in the definition of solution in a problem with the one Laplacian. And they ask for uh, the CDU, the pairing, is a random measure with finite total variation. We know, we know that this holds if u is a bound variation function and it is in the space LP and the divergence of Z belongs to LQ. Another condition is that U is a BB function and it is bounded. And in this case, the divergence of the vector field has to belong to L1, L1 has to be integrable. And if U is just a BB function, it is proof that if the divergence of Z belongs to Ln, then uh, the pairing set U is well defined and it is a random measure with finite total variation. There are more conditions, but in our problem, since our solution is going to be in L2, we just need this one. Okay, so uh, when we work with the one Laplacian, uh, sometimes we cannot uh, assure that the boundary condition holds in the usual sense. So we need uh, the weak trace. And uh, when we talk that this boundary condition, U equal to omega holds in the Weak sense means that the weak trace belongs to the sign of omega minus u. And moreover, also a Green's formula holds. Well, I said at the beginning of the talk that uh, we are going to follow the strategy, uh, strategy of Andreu Vida, Mazón, and Toledo. Uh, they start uh, proving that uh, the Green is a uh, my solution to the problem. Uh, talking about my solution, we need this Cauchy problem, where the more important thing is the way we have defined here the operator A. Depending on the properties of this operator, we will have a main solution or not. Uh, in the, to define the concept of my solution, we need uh, to start with uh, which is an epsilon discretization of the Cauchy problem. We will have a partition of the interval zero capital T. And there exists some function G1, G2, Cn, where this condition holds, then this system is called an epsilon discretization of the Cauchy problem. And we say that we have an epsilon solution to this epsilon discretization if uh, there exists an, a function with which a constant uh, such that the system holds for every a, 1, 2, 12. So uh, we said uh, that omega is a main solution to the Cauchy problem if for every epsilon, uh, the epsilon discretization has an epsilon solution. And moreover, this epsilon, uh, the, the main solution 
uh, goes to, uh, sorry, the epsilon, is, uh, epsilon solutions goes to the my solution when epsilon goes to zero. Okay, uh, go back to the problem with dynamical boundary condition. Uh, in our case, um, the operator is going, to be, uh, is going to be defined on the boundary of omega. So uh, the main solution is omega. Uh, nevertheless, uh, function u is going to be uh, univocally determined since it is uh, the solution to this Dirichlet problem. And we know that uh, this problem has a unique solution. So uh, we don't have problems with the function u. It's, um, but the main solution is omega. U is just an, an auxiliary function. Okay, so uh, the bond, uh, sorry, the, um, which um, operator we have defined. We have defined an operator in order to all the conditions of our problem holds. Uh, we say that well, we need that function omega is in L2 on the boundary. And we also need uh, that this uh, equation holds and the boundary condition too, which means that uh, there exists a function u in mv and in L2, and there exists also a vector field set less than one, bonding by one, such that the equation holds in the sense of distributions and set the u is equal to the total uh, variation of u as measured. Uh, here, uh, set the vector field is playing the role of the equation, as I said at the beginning. Moreover, uh, the boundary condition holds just in the weak sense. Uh, we define, uh, we say that P belongs to this operator if um, is set, uh, the weak trace set new. Uh, when we are looking for a solution to this, this problem, function u is univocally determined, but uh, Maybe there exists more than one set, it's not unique. So that's uh, function B. And uh, in the way we have defined function B, it is uh, bounded by one. Well, um, in the way that we have defined the operator, it uh, holds these conditions that uh, are the ones that allow us to say that there exists a unique main solution to the Cauchy problem. A ver. Yes, uh, a particular case appears uh, when lambda is equal to zero. In this case, uh, we can define the operator in the same way by taking into account that since um, this factor doesn't appear in the equation, we cannot assume, uh, assume that the function u is in L2 on the boundary. Um, we don't have problems because in that case, this pairing is well defined uh, because the diversity of set in this case is in Ln. But uh, we don't have a uniqueness of solution. There are results that prove that there are more than one solution. So since we don't have a unique solution of function u, we, we will not have um, a solution to the problem with the dynamical boundary conditions. We can prove that there exists a main solution in the same way that we do when lambda is bigger than zero, but uh, we just uh, we stop there. We cannot go further. Well, existence for strong solution. First, uh, I'm going to define what we understand, which is a, my solu a strong solution. We say that u omega, this pairing of two functions, is a solution to a, uh, to a problem if uh, u is a BB function for almost everything, and it also belongs to L2 because of it is a solution to a Dirichlet problem. Moreover, since omega is a main solution, it is continuous, and we ask that this main solution belongs to W11. We need uh, for the time derivative. Well, we say that this pairing is a solution if the initial latum condition holds, and there exists a vector field bonded by one, and the equation holds with a set playing the role of the quotient. Moreover, we need that the pairing set u is equal to the total variation, and as well as uh, the two boundary condition holds in the weak sense. Uh, 
Uh, this is a solution, and we have proved that there exists, in fact, a strong solution, which means that uh, all the condition holds for almost every T. Uh, the main problem that we have um, faced to is uh, that the measurability of the function u, because function u is univocally determined for um, in every t, but we need the measurability. Well, we have proved that c if uh, lambda is bigger than one zero, g is in L1, 0, t, L2 on the boundary, and omega zero is square integrable on the boundary, then there exists a strong solution. And moreover, we have proved these two uh, inequalities that says that um, the, the solutions u and omega are bounded by the uh, initial data. Um, if instead of uh, taking function g in L1, 0, t, L2, and we take more general data, uh, is, uh, we get a more regular uh, solution, but just for omega. In that case, omega is a uh, Lipschitz continuous. Well, another result that we have proved is a comparison principle for um, the main solution omega, if t1 is less than e2 and omega 0, 1 is less than omega 0, 2, then a uh, function omega, the solution for that one with 1 and the solution for that one 2, holds the same inequality. And uh, also, uh, we have proved uh, the same result, but now for function u, for the solution u. We are, um, I want to remark, that we have proved uh, this result not uh, using um, due to the um, epsilon discretization. With the epsilon discretization of the problem, uh, finally, uh, we prove that this uh, comparison principle holds. We cannot prove it directly with the Dirichlet problem. Uh, well, instead of working in zero capital D times omega, we work in zero infinity we have proved uh, that there exists a global solution. And we said that it is a global solution if it, there exists a solution for every positive t. And finally, um, I'm going to present um, a result which shows the continuous dependence on the data. If we take, uh, sorry, the distance between the solution uh, omega, uh, the main solution, and function u, uh, is bounded by the distance between the data we choose. And uh, this is all I want to tell, so thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Are there any questions? I'm pretty sure P Professor Mucha has a question. Okay, so I have the question concerning the case lambda equals zero. What we know about, say, stability, uniqueness, there are some examples. Uh, uh, sorry, please, can you repeat, please? Uh, what we know about the case lambda equals zero concerning uniqueness and stability. If we have some uh, examples of, unique, uh, of uniqueness or other yes. phenomenon. Uh, just uh, the Dirichlet problem, the equation minus the diversion set equal to zero and the boundary condition u equal to omega, uh, there, are, um, uh, there are examples of the, that there is not uniqueness of solution. In the particular case with all uh, the conditions, uh, we don't have proof anything. We don't search for that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, so, so these things that you were talking about, Dirichlet problems. So these are uh, these are not with dynamical boundary conditions, just stationary problem. Sorry. Uh, no, the, there is no evolution here in the Dirichlet. This Dirichlet in problem. Dirichlet, this is just no, no. Not. Uh, the Dirichlet is we need. Uh, we have this Dirichlet problem with no evolution at all, but we. And the evolution condition in the in the boundary, only on the boundary. The function omega, the main solution is we have the evolution. 
Okay, okay, so my question is this slide that was the next one was about this problem with dynamical boundary condition. Uh, now the, the, the even next one, because you were talking the about next this. One, this one? Yeah. Okay, this is my solutions. Okay, uh, so, so this non uniqueness. Oh, here. Here this you are. This is the speaking. definition of the operator when lambda is equal to zero. Okay, but aha, uh -huh, so you are speaking now, you are just speaking about the. Uh, somehow, ah, just the def just definition of the operator. Yes, the, ah. the operator can be defined in the same way, but we don't have uniqueness of function u, so we cannot have a strong solution. We can have a mild solution, mild solution exists, mm -hmm. but we don't have a, a strong solution to the problem. We don't have function u. Uh, okay, I see. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, U depends on omega in a subtle way through the boundary conditions. Uh, do you have any way of assuring that uh, equality at the boundary holds in the trace sense? Um, the boundary condition holds only in the weak sense, not in the trace sense. We cannot prove that the uh, equality holds in the usual sense. Yeah, but my question is, do you have any sufficient condition for the equality in the trace cells? Uh, we cannot try, but I don't think that adding... I don't know. Maybe I have to think that, but I don't think that it is. It is it's because of the... Uh, the one Laplace operator that uh, doesn't give us the the good properties. Uh, how about uh, assuming omega is convex? Uh, because when you have uh, convexity, uh, the solution to the least gradient problem assumes uh, the boundary data. So I guess uh, uh, convexity might be sufficient here too. What do you think? Let, let me explain that I, I believe uh, Professor Rybka is speaking about the situation where in the beginning you start with, with the omega that is a trace of, of you and yes. then you just don't yes. have any separation. That's, that's right. So that's the question. I um, completely lost. I try to understand that uh, omega, the set, is convex, is what you are saying to me. Yes. Okay. I didn't think about it, but maybe it can work. It's um, a strategy that uh, we didn't focus on, so I don't know if it will work. No, I don't. I see. I see. Thank you. But, you, but you have some kind of comparison principle, so maybe something like this could, could follow. Can you show this comparison principle again? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, but the comparison principle helps uh, with uh, uh, uniqueness. Uh, how would it help us? Um... Okay, this is not the kind of uh, thing that I thought about. So, so in this case, I guess not. And uh, anyway, the, I think this is subtle. Mm. I, uh, do we have further questions? Is Glenn trying to ask a question? No, Glenn was fixing his video camera, sorry. <laughs> I see, I see. So are, are you still working on these kind of issues? Maybe, or? Right now, no. Uh, I want to continue, but right now is the... Um, the last thing I have about the dynamical boundary condition. I see. And uh, uh, let me ask you another question. Uh, you assumed lambda u, but uh, in, when I saw your slides, I thought you wish to study uh, the evolution problem also in the first equation. Also in the... Um, Mm. Here. Yes, yes, yes. I would guess that you wish to study 
uh, replace uh, lambda u with ut. So you have uh, two evolution problems and you have a dynamic boundary condition. Yeah, maybe that's uh, another step to study, but uh, right now uh, we didn't do that. I don't know if it will be easy or if we, if we want, I don't know. We start with the um, elliptic problem, but we didn't try the, the, try the parabolic. Uh, actually, we studied uh, a similar problem. Have you studied a similar problem? Yes. We did, and we have existence in uniqueness. With the time derivative of u. Yes, yes, and that it has been recently published. Can I have the link for the paper or? Yes, yes, um, I need to find it. Uh, so it was published? Yes, it has been recently published. Ah. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, okay, um, uh, I have to quit. So, the, uh, so, so meanwhile, uh, I kind of wanted to ask because I'm not really, mm, I don't know mm, a lot about mild solutions uh, in general. I'm wondering in this case, is it just that you cannot, you don't know how to prove that there is a strong solution, that there is a, somehow yeah, that, that solutions are in fact strong solutions, or uh, do you know that they are not strong solutions? Uh, you are in, talking in, about in this case, case lambda, lambda equal to zero. zero. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Um, we prove that there exists a main solution, and we know that there exists a function u, but this function u is not unique. So we can have more than one u. So we. If, U is not unique, you cannot have. Ah, okay, um, because if it was strong, then you would uh, no, know uh, uniqueness. I explain, sorry, sorry. Uh, we are, um, in all the proof, we are taking subsex, um, sequences and subsequences. And if we don't have uniqueness, we cannot um, get final uh, a solution. I don't know if it helped you or not. Uh -huh. Okay. Is it the uniqueness? Because uh, the proof doesn't allow us to prove finally that U is a solution. If we have uniqueness, we can do that. But if we don't have uniqueness mm -hmm. of the okay, you, you problem. I see, because you prove by constructing sub solutions and super solutions. That's a, okay. And you, you don't know whether it is, it is the same function in general. I mean, it might not be the same, the sub solution and super solution. Okay. Um, maybe Salva wishes to ask a question or make a comment. May I think that Salva is not in the. I see, the not in the room. Yeah. So let me ask you uh, are there any further questions? Let me check the chat. Uh, I can't see any further questions. Uh, so uh, let us thank Marta again. And we will uh, mm -hmm. uh, make a break until uh, the afternoon in Europe. Uh, we will continue with a slightly different uh, set of topics. Uh, and uh, we will invite our Japanese friends to join us tomorrow. And probably uh, there is no conference dinner, no lunch uh, dinner, uh, no lunch uh, conference, but uh, tomorrow we may bring our favorite mug with our favorite drink for the morning session to uh, make a toast. Uh, so let us uh, see, uh, let's meet, uh, this afternoon or uh, tomorrow uh, morning. Uh, I guess Piotr is willing to say something. You, Piotr Mocha is looking like a person who wants to say something. No, I do not see myself. So maybe this is the reason I look, but <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, 
So anyway, so you you mean that tomorrow there will be some uh, less official portion of our meeting, yes? But you must bring your favorite mug with with your favorite drink. Uh, in general, I am, will be sitting in my how to say uh, cabinet, so all this stuff is here with me. Good. Very close. <laughs> so. Thank you for your coming and uh, we, we, we shall see later. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.